I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Today I'm going to unveil my new raised bed, harvest winter vegetables, and cook up my last kusha squash. So don't go away. <laughs> a garden is always in transition. It's never perfect and it's never done. It would take a year to tell the whole story of just this little raised bed, which is a microcosm of my garden and the world at large. But there's a whole world underneath that red voil. Before I unveil it, let's take a look at its development. I had a raised bed built last November on what we affectionately call the plateau. I used the existing soil, so I promptly planted buckwheat seed to build nitrogen. I'd grown weary of tramping all over it and decided to mark off a walkway, and the space left was the shape of a trapezoid. After birds ate the buckwheat seed, I laid down a layer of legume mulch and covered it with my compost. Just before Christmas, I direct seeded the bed in Brunswick cabbage and collard seed brought to me from Portugal. I use nursery cups with bottoms cut off to protect against cutworm cutting down seedlings. Then I covered the bed in voile. By mid-February, the collards were a bust. The cabbages were barely there, and the volunteers were shooting up. Some buckwheat had popped up as well. I found cabbage worms on an uncovered container of kale leaves, but none under my voile. <laughs> I clipped the buckwheat for mulch. One week later, the bok choy was taking over. I harvested some bok choy to make room for the tomato and cabbages. Why do I love red voile over garden cloth? You can see through it. <laughs> you can see what's going on down there. And I guarantee you with red voile, there are no cabbage worms. <laughs> you have to put it on the day you plant your starts though. Otherwise you have to look daily for eggs and larva, which can quickly devour your cabbage leaves robbing them from producing enough energy to develop heads. It was a constant battle. They are relentless. So I started using garden cloth, but I got tired of lifting the cloth to check on my plants until my garden friend, Sumi, suggested voile. Look at the difference between covered broccoli and the ones I didn't cover. I used clothespins to um, as to hold it down, I just put gathers of voile in like this, and then I stuck these in the uh, soil, and it worked really well. Okay, starting from the left corner, there's a volunteer cabbage outside the bed. That's purple basil. That's Brunswick cabbage. This is a volunteer tomato that I did not plant. Nasturtium, volunteer. And Brunswick cabbage, Brunswick cabbage, Brunswick cabbage, and some sort of volunteer squash. And I've got some German chamomile over in this corner. And, uh, Let's take a look on the other side. Of course, nasturtium is just insane. And I've got to get this under control. It can't take up the whole garden. It would like to. Okay, so this is a bok choy that bolted because it got lost down there underneath this cabbage. And another cabbage down here, and that's good. They're at different stages, so hopefully I'll have cabbage for a while. Look how perfect and amazing they are. 
I mean, not one hole in a leaf here. And the, the little head has just started developing, so we've got a long way to go. <laughs> what I discovered, there are three squash vines in that small space, along with the tomato and the six or seven Brunswick cabbages. Now my plan is to rewrap the cabbages in voil and keep the borage right beside the tomato to protect it against the tobacco hornworm, keep some of the nasturtium to trap the aphids, and of course before I start doing that I'm going to put coffee grounds around all the plants and earthworm castings. <sighs> Watch. <laughs> They're so perfect, I kind of hate to rock the boat. Okay, the finished product for now. This raised bed story continues. I have some bee activity, so maybe they'll get to work pollinating these flowers. As you can see, I did not prune this, so there's all kinds of suckers, and it's just going to be... I think I'll try to keep this like a bush. It's April the 3rd and it's going to be 70 degrees today. So this is the last time you're gonna see this jungle. This jungle. <laughs> time to clear some space for summer veggies. <laughs> This fencing wire I used to keep out raccoons from digging. Well, as you can see, this beet is not going through that space. But it was too hot to do any real work, and I only grabbed a couple of handfuls. Three days later, I cleared out the sweet peas from the back 40 and the beets and carrots from the raised bed. The wild arugula was a bonus. <laughs> Today I want to cook up a recipe from my friend, author, and chef, Mi McCormick. Mi shared this recipe on her WSMV Channel 4's More at Midday Nashville audience last fall, and I want to give this Kushaw Cashew Bisque a try. <laughs> This kusha squash has been sitting on my coffee table since last October. It is now April the 3rd, and I was thrilled that when I cut it open, perspiration is coming out and the flesh looks great. I've got everything in my pot. And I'm just gonna bring this to a simmer and simmer it until it's tender. For a little heat, I'm using one of my orange Thai chilies. Use whole and remove before you puree the bisque. Okay, here it is. Let's give it a try. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up and share with a friend. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> it's never perfect, and it's never done. I don't care if you're the Getty, it's never done, okay? <laughs> Hello. You're not long for this world. Thank you. <laughs>
Oh, and I stepped on the garlic, so... Mmm! <laughs> Open up the sinuses. <laughs>